This is Heath. And I'm Josh. And that was really quiet. And this is randomness. <laughs> Why did not, you my say norm- it? not my normal. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's been a little bit since we've been on the mics because we kind of purposely recorded a couple of other episodes so that we could take a break. And we just had a little guys trip. Uh, we met up with our buddy Jason, who lives in North Padre, and Kylie, that uh, we talk about every once in a while from the band Junior, that's a really good friend of ours. <clears throat> and uh, so we went fishing down there our, this last weekend. And we to be honest with you, we didn't catch that many fish, uh, but we did have fun. So. Didn't catch a fish, but the brew tasted nice. So. <laughs> it, was, it was good fellowship. It was good yeah, to yeah. see everyone and hang out and have a good time and laugh and cut up like like we were 15 years old. Yeah, turn turn around right there. I think that was what we right. decided to name our group of uh uh I don't I don't know. Our next guest might know something about that. I'll ask him. But uh <laughs> so uh anyway, we we had a good time, good fellowship like you said. The four of us are very rare to all get together. I think the last time we all got together was 4 years ago before the pandemic. Yeah. So pre-COVID. Yeah. But anyway, all right, guys. So we have another guest, singer and songwriter, Walter Lee, is with us. Everybody, <laughs> what's going on, hey. dude? How's it going? Welcome. What's going on? Good man. How are you? I'm doing you fantastic. Doing? Fantastic. It's been a minute. It has. Past, we've, we've, yeah, yeah. Our our paths have crossed a few times in the early 2000s because you were um, part of a band called Rocket Cleaner. I guess I should say it was your band when it comes down to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, honestly, especially it's always been a collaborative, especially uh, especially when 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 we met, uh, man, we were we were all all in the trenches together, kind of, you know, putting sure. in the same amount of same amount of grit and determination. So it just yeah. I just happened to be the one up front. So a lot of people kind of and, and the one that kept going after some of the other ones uh, bowed out. So they just kind of. <laughs> pushed me in that position yeah, I'll, yeah my my association with walter has always been rocket queen and and the hair right? <laughs> if he always always that's what we, we always would joke about it we was like oh, as walter's here here comes the hair too the peacock because uh, <laughs> he always had this this kind of emo peacock thing going on in the back and uh so we always knew when walter entered the the room because the hair was above the rest of everybody the hair. i have to find a photo of that <laughs> oh it's great the hair arrived before i did <laughs> but yeah just so just to elaborate when i was traveling with the band junior on and off in the early 2000s uh walter's band rocket uh rocket queen we we crossed paths a lot and we would play at like 516 soundstage and in, in shreveport and a few other places uh in that area man a lot. we've played with junior so much and uh maybe we'll get into it but there there was one one of my favorite places was this super weird place uh you know let's just get into it i don't know where i'm awful with <laughs> geography but i i know it was deep in louisiana i know it was some sort of teen club but it was like Chuck's teen town boom there you go all I all I remember was <laughs> I was hella creeped out because all the kids were like super underage, but they were all acting yeah. like adults. And then the I remember the owner was like, "Hey, do you guys want to come and stay at my house? It's haunted." And we were like, "No, we're good. We're good." Yeah. I, I'm less creeped out by the ghost and more creeped out by this area. And I remember the the, <laughs> the the roof was so short that when we would and we're short guys, but like when we would jump, it, like our heads yeah. our heads would hit. And I just remember all night <laughs> standing in front of Adam, the bass player for Junior, and every time he would go to sing like harmony vocals, I would reach up and grab his mic and move it to the left of his face so he couldn't <laughs> sing. And it, it was just great. It was the best night. My favorite Junior yeah. story. <laughs> That that was when when we were talking the introduction there when I said I, I bet our guest probably knows that so Chuck would always say turn around right there every time he's had it in, in a sentence so it was always a running joke with us was hey I'm gonna go over there and turn around right there and then when I'm done with that I'm gonna turn around right there so we were we were having, that was part of our weekend it became part yeah. of our weekend uh, with the with the fishing trip was hey I'm gonna, hey turn around right there so, oh. but that's so funny that. I didn't realize y'all played a uh, Chuck Teen Town with Reen Jr. I, I guess I wasn't at that show. I don't think just so. Once. 
once. It was definitely a weird place. Uh, you know, <laughs> looking back, but they packed it with kids. Uh, packed. It was a great show. It was fun. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if you're not expecting it, the first time you go right. there, it is very off putting in the best possible way. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. But I can I can remember being there and the kids showing up with um, an actual bull's skull for everybody to sign, and then <laughs> and, 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 oh, wow. and then there was like this nine year old kid dipping, and he had <laughs> and he had a he had like a uh, like a big huge Bowie knife in his, in Dude, his boot. <laughs> that kid I remember because that's how Chris described our guitar player. That's how he describes it. He was like, I just remember nine year old kids with dip rings in the back in their back pockets. <laughs> And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. my God, this is great. This is freaking great. This Deep in Louisiana. Deep in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. Way deep in Louisiana. Like, but, uh, okay. So, you go. <laughs> all right. So we, so we plugged Chuck's Teen Town enough. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so starting kind of at the beginning, uh, where are you from, man? Are you originally from the Tyler I'm actu- area? Or? I'm actually from Shreveport, Louisiana. I was born in Shreveport um stayed there till i was uh i think i stayed there till about 12 moved to longview for about a year or so skipped up to uh plano was that was way out of our out of our uh class (laughs) we were we were we were a lot poorer (laughs) we were much poorer than plano so we were like eh, we're out so we we were headed back to Longview and stopped in and Tyler and just stayed ever since. Oh, so, okay. so you've been there for a long time then. So yep. since you were what? A teenager? Fifteen years old. Fifteen years so, old. A long so time. How did is that where you just kind of discovered music and where it all came about there or before then or well I in Shreveport I got I got into uh actually the first stuff I got into was underground hip hop hardcore hardcore rap like i always tell the the story when i was a kid my my the best christmas i ever had we didn't have a lot of money but but my mom she got me two things and it was the greatest i I just loved it one was like a super mario brothers calendar which was awesome (laughs) and the other was a nwa straight out of compton vinyl and nice. she, she, she <laughs> didn't great know. Christmas. She didn't know. Yeah, I, it was it was amazing. But she didn't know what it was. But she got it for me, and I loved it. And like, I you know, I was I was into Two Live Crew and NWA and Too Short, and like <laughs> that was just where I grew up, man. I grew up kind of very very Monkhouse Drive adjacent. Any any of my Shreveport people will know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Monkhouse Drive. Um, so I, I, I was there and I got into hip hop and then my brother, my older brother is about nine years older than me. He went off to the army and left his tape collection. And that's when I got into Bon Jovi and Poison and uh-huh. Kiss and Striper and, uh, you know, just all of that. And so I, I did that, went to Longview started skating heavily. And then when I went to Plano for, I was there for a couple of months there was like four or five guys that had started a band and one other dude that I skated with. And he gave me a, it was two tapes. And one was a peg boy tape, which was like this punk rock band. And the other was a green oh, yeah. day. Yeah. It was a green day. Uh, 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 10,000 slappy. I don't remember the name. It's super long. 10,000 smoothed out slappy hours. Happy hours. Uh, yeah. yeah. Happy 10, hours. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and it had that and Kerplunk on it. So I took that back to Tyler when I got to Tyler. (laughs) And there was a huge punk rock hardcore scene in Tyler. So my first actual real show was like an underground hardcore show. And uh, a punk rock and hardcore show at a a VFW or Knights of Columbus here. And it just grew from there. So like (laughs) that, that's, that's where I cut all of my musical teeth was in that punk rock hardcore scene. Right on. Huh. That's, yeah that's crazy that, that you know you bring up the green day stuff and that was kind of my the first time i ever really heard that was some i don't know if it was josh or somebody gave me a tape 
yeah of like kerplunk or or ten thousand and one smooth that or whatever it was and i'm like whoa what is this man this is awesome glorious and, uh, that's right yeah I got caught on because i'm kind of the same way as like you were kind of explaining you know the hairband stuff but i was definitely going and we, we must be about the same age because well, i went sure. through that whole stuff that whole thing through too and then you know then when grunge and punk, pop punk hit and whatever but anyway i can go on and on about that crap but uh <laughs> yeah it, it's um, it's great to get not not that i everybody gets into punk rock when they get into punk rock but it was so great to have green day before they blew up and then still yeah. love green mm-hmm. day after they blew up because like i mean the For dookie sure. record is phenomenal but uh yeah. but to be into like kerplunk like before that and to at least have that and be like wow i never saw that coming but seeing how it yeah. worked man, it was just awesome mm-hmm. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the, those those albums are freaking awesome. We used to act them out and tape them and stuff when we were. Oh, <laughs> man. That's, that's how we were with Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Well, I was, I was kind of going to that. So, um, <laughs> when, well, before, before I do that, when, when did you kind of know you you knew you were going to how, how, so, how, that you wanted to do music full time? I'm sure there's a big gap there, but how um, did you get to that point where you wanted to do that? So when I got to Tyler, I got my, I bought my first guitar. I kind of had a guitar in Plano um, and I, I I wasn't very good, but like Plano was the first time I got my taste of MTV because in uh, Longview, there was the, the, uh, the church there would not let MTV happen, but they let VH1, (laughs) which had uh, uh, like all the hip hop stuff on it. Um, which was at the time it was the height of gangster rap, so it was way worse than any anything MTV was doing. <laughs> um, but so I got my right. first taste of uh of MTV when I got to Dallas in Plano, and so when I got to Tyler, I was primed to get a guitar, and I got a guitar and a a, a little a little amp from a pawn shop. This this guy named Mark Garten, uh, who was in like the local rock scene in Tyler. Uh, He sold me my first guitar and I got that for Christmas. And a buddy of mine named Zane Vaughn was on the bus. He was the first drummer for rocket queen. Me and him started a band, our very first band, uh, which was absolutely brilliantly named violent pacifist. And it's spelled (laughs) exactly like you would think it would be. Um, Badly. Uh, so, and, nice. and, uh, another guy named Eric Dickerson and, uh, who we're all, we're all still friends to this day. Um, but we, we started that band and that from that band, we got into playing, uh, local shows with like the, in the punk rock scene and stuff. And then, um, again, I kept skating and I was more, uh, more just skated. You know, and I played music here and there, but I remember one day we were skating and I kind of made the, I I don't, I don't remember why, but I kind of made the decision in my head. I was like, you know, I think I just, I think I want to do music more than I want to skate. Like I love skating and I I don't see myself ever stopping, but I think I want to do music more than I want to skate. And it just, that switch kind of flipped. And then I started pursuing music and it took me a little while and being in little, little kind of local bands and then finally i did one local band with my buddy darren johnson who was like the guy who was booking all of the indie diy punk rock hardcore shows from all over the world they were coming to tyler like i said a huge tyler wow, scene crazy. like i mean everybody from like earth crisis to hate breed to non-point like all of those bands have played in little warehouses in tyler and nobody's wow. ever known. Like Hatebreed actually came back from like they were on uh, Ozfest, and they on their day off they drove into Tyler and played in this warehouse where their bus wouldn't even fit. So we just went up and picked them up, brought them back, and they played on our <laughs> equipment. So like it was great. But like so anyway, I start I started a band with him called The End of Julia, and got my first taste of touring uh, nationally where we were booking our own tours. Um, and we would we played, you know, we would go up, go up to California and back 
and go up to Chicago and back and to Florida and back. And like, we would just go and come back. And that was actually my first real taste of touring. And then when that band kind of started falling, not really falling apart, but it was running its course. I found a band called the marvelous three and a guy named Butch Walker. And I fell Uh in love with what they were doing. And immediately we were on tour in LA and I was, we were playing the knitting factory in LA and I was walking around the strip by myself because nobody else wanted to walk. They just wanted to stay at the club. And, and like I had passed some random, like I, I passed Stevie Nicks, like standing there on in the hallway. And like, I passed nice. like, like all these people. And I was just like, dude, I know what I want to do. And as soon as I got back, I called Zane and I called, uh, and I told him and I was like, Hey man, I want to do this thing where it's more rock and roll. Cause like the end of Julia was kind of Jimmy at world shoegazer type, uh, indie emo stuff. And I was like, man, I just want to, okay. I want to do something that's a little more show oriented. And, uh, and we started working on it and started writing and, and putting together. And I called, uh, Chris who was in uh, a different like indie band at the time. Uh, and we were always kind of at odds because like, we were both the guy in our band. Like he's such a prolific writer and I'm a prolific writer. And we both just, so I was like, I want to work with him. Like that's the guy I want to work with. Right. So like we kind of put our differences aside and started working together. <laughs> and like, it just, it worked so well. Um, so, and then that's how rocket queen started. And then the, you know, we, we did that okay. for a long time. Yeah. A real long time. And yeah. so did, I assume Rocket Queen comes from the Guns N' Roses song. Yeah. So so back in 2003, again, when I was when I was doing the the kind of shoegazer uh, emo stuff, um, I was like, what can I do to make like the most like in your face statement with a name? Like just, you know, when you hear it, OK, something something this is not a normal band. Something's going to happen. And back then there was no guns and roses. Like Chinese democracy wasn't out. Like it was never going to happen. Like, you know, you yeah. just knew if, if you were part of any part of the industry whatsoever, you kind of knew like that wasn't happening, you know, like it, things were bad in right. that camp. Uh, so I was like, well, I mean, rocket queen's a great song. That's a great song. Let's just add another T on it so we can pull from, because the whole point was like, let's do a glam rock pop punk band. And uh, and I was like, so we'll sound pop punk and we'll look glam rock. It'll be great, you know? And I was like, well, let's take yeah. Rocket from Ricky Rocket, put two T's on it, and then Queen, put it together. And it's, you know, like it, it was everything that we loved. Like, I, I love Queen. I love Guns N' Roses. I love Poison. So we just kind of put it together and... Man, we just went for it. And then Guns N' Roses got back yeah. together and it was always, were you guys a tribute band? It's like, <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> no. <Nope>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was 20 yeah, something no, years of two T's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny is it's not kind of fun. It's not funny, but I, we had a dog named Rocket and I totally put two T's on the end because of you guys. When, nice. When, <laughs> so <laughs> Teaching that. Yeah. He uh, was awesome teaching bad spelling yeah. all around. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so <clears throat> and then I so I, I'll just kind of say so my my favorite record was the the first one, the Two Rock for Radio. Nice. Because I was so much into the punk rock, you know, that I mean that was more of a punk record in, in my eyes. Yep. But you can definitely hear the rock in it too. You're definitely to me you're you're just a rock guy. Yeah. That's just the way I see it. Uh, as far as what you've put out over the years and, and and always going back to it and looking at it, I could see it progress to more rock, in my opinion. It went like pop punk and kind of progressed to rock. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it felt like. To it, me. it did. And then uh, it got older as we got older. Okay. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then now I just recently when I knew you were going to come on the show, I started going back and listening to more stuff and whatnot. And then I'm like, wait a minute who's this Walter Lee guy? Why is it just Walter Lee all of a sudden, you know, cause I knew it was you, but I'm like, what's going on here. So you kind of told that while ago before we got on here. So how did that progress from rocket queen to Walter Lee? So, um, 
couple years back, I reached out to a guy uh, in uh, he's in Nashville now. Um, I believe an Oklahoma native um, that that you know, a guy named Zach Malloy, and mm-hmm. he had done a lot of work with a lot of people and that that I respected and I loved. And, but one in particular, he was doing this burn halo record and this burn halo record was, it was just put together so well. And it was such a good record. And I was like, that's the direction that we want to go. Like, that's where we want to, we want to take rocket queen. Cause for me, I hardly ever make the same record twice. Um, and, and, probably less because of a conscious decision and more because it takes so long for us to put out records that we're just different people by the time we do another record that doing another two rock for radio when we did kiss and tell would have been asinine for us it would have just been crazy so anyway i reached out to to zach and he got back with me and we started talking about a record And we were in a weird position in the band, I remember, because, like, we weren't really ready to do a record. But, like, we had this opportunity to work with Zach. I wanted to work with Zach. And it just seemed like the right thing to do. So we started traveling back and forth to Nashville to do uh, songwriting and pre-production and see what happens and start recording some of the stuff. So we did that. And we did a bunch of songs. um, And one of the songs was uh it was a little left left of center and it's like yeah that's a you know that's that's a little little southern it's a little southern and uh the the thing with it was for the last 10 years before that i had been re when i was in longview i got into like a lot of 90s country And like, I was like, man, this stuff is so good. And I've ever since then, even for all the rocket queen stuff, I've always visited the songwriters of country music for, uh, inspiration, you know, um, I've always loved that style of writing. Like, so I, in, in Longview, I did the nineties country stuff. And then for the last 10 years, I've been really getting back into country. Like there's always been people that like either we would meet somebody and I'd be like, man, this guy is amazing. Like this guy's stuff is just killer. Uh, And uh, I had a friend named Penny that worked for Universal Nashville. Her name's Penny Lazo. And she uh, honestly she reignited a lot of my love for country music because we we would travel and just go to shows like we i would just drive to dallas we'd jump in the car and then we'd go to oklahoma and see pat green or we would go to we would stay in dallas and see jason aldean or you know it didn't matter we were all, keith urban taylor swift like it didn't matter we just went like uh right. and uh ACL and whatever it was. Um, so my love for country music had, had started like getting on fire, but it was, it was still kind of weird for me to do like country music because like, I, I didn't feel like I had anything viable in that, in that scene. I was like, and I don't, I probably don't belong there. And, uh, and then we met a guy a while back, we met a guy named Brantley Gilbert in Tyler he was playing this this uh, place called Electric Cowboys, which is a comparatively to where Brantley's playing now. It was it's a small venue, and him and his team. Uh, he had a guy named Jeremy working for him that, for whatever reason, immediately we connected, and like he was, they were, his whole team were just so good to us. His management, uh, Steve Tussman at the time, was so good to us that we we stayed in touch. And his stuff is more his stuff is more rock and country. Um, right. So with that, I was like, okay, country's changing. Country is changing. So like, there's a, there's something going on, but I still wasn't at the point where I was ready to do something. So when we were up in Nashville. 
we had stayed in touch with Steve and we hung out with Steve a lot when we were in Nashville and he kind of took us around and showed us a bunch of places. And, and then, um, so we came back and kept doing the rocket queen thing. And then about a year and a half ago, I, I, I remember I was working and I work out of my car and I was sitting in a gas station parking lot and it, it just kind of hit me and I was listening to some stuff and I was like, you know what, man, I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't care about anything else. Like I'm going to do what I want to do and this is what I want to do. And you know, anyone else's opinion be damned. I really, it doesn't bother me. Like I'm not yeah. going to be your typical, your typical country act. It's definitely a mix between country and rock. It's, it's got all of my, my roots in it when I write. Um, it's almost all of the guys from rocket queen. So like we all consciously made the decision together. Like I, I, I remember having that thought and then uh -huh. I went, I went to them and I was like, Hey guys, this is what I want to do. And they were like, man, we've been talking about doing this for years. Like it's time let's do it. And we all just started collectively behind the scenes doing what was necessary to put the project together. And then, uh, that's kind of how it started. And so from there, we uh, we started working on the first single. One of the songs that we did with Zach Malloy is uh, it's going to be the first single. Um, it's going to drop soon. I don't have a release date yet, but we're in, we're we're working on the working on the video. Final mix is done. Um, everything's ready to go. Artwork's done. Everything's just like it's all fallen into place. We're just working on timing right now, and we've been playing. Uh, right couple one-off shows here and there like just around just to kind of warm up get our sea legs under us again because it's been about a year since sure. we fully played um so we'll do we'll do that and then next year it's definitely gonna definitely gonna kick into gear so i'm looking forward to that right on that's awesome man so that's so how it changed you guys have a do you guys have a like a full uh have y'all written a bunch of songs like you're ready to do a, a a whole album or is that to come later or what's going uh, on with that we we do have an album's worth of material easily um i don't think we'll do an album a lot of a lot of people are just kind of doing uh just really doing singles right now and it, for us it makes more sense to do a single put all the effort into promoting and 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 you know, giving people all the content we can wrapped around that single and then moving on to the next single and then moving on to the next single. That way we can devote with us doing it all independent right now, we can devote all of our energy into one song and really like get it out there for people to pay attention to. And we still have a bunch of people from rocket queen that, that fortunately are, are still in the ride for us. Right. But, but we we gotta we gotta really reach out there and and connect with a lot of different different people that that have no idea who Rocket Queen is. So we no. we got a lot of work, cool. you know, a lot of work cut out for us. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I'm I'll I'll say I went and looked around and I just happened to hear a little something. So you know, yeah. I liked it. <laughs> it. It it is it is out there if you search hard enough. Um, but uh but you gotta you gotta really you gotta really uh pay attention to the context clues. <laughs> so see how I snuck that in there, people? <laughs> uh so uh <laughs> <laughs> so just go going way back for a minute because I just thought yeah. about this. So every time I listen or every time I start a song in the car with like my family or my kid or whatever, I always go, Here we go. Uh, and it always, it's from that it's from it's from your first album because that's the first track is just there we go. <laughs> so everybody always looks around at me and goes, why are you doing that? And I'm like, yeah, it's from this band. And I ah, just, just shut up, you know, <laughs> but I do that. I do that all the time. So, Dude. so, so it's out there, man. I'm, I'm, I'm digging song one big time. That's a, <laughs> that's a thing. Like the funniest thing. Okay. So when we did that, that's our, that's our producer, John Congleton. Uh, who's in a band called the paper. Chase. Oh, I thought it was you. No, 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 no. I wish I could take credit for that, but I can't. Um, that was John uh, from the, the, he's a, he's in a band called the paper chase, but he's like a, a very highly respected producer. And 
an amazing dude, like a very cool guy. He's he's he'll go down in history as one of my favorite, favorite people to work with that I've ever worked with. He's been he was so good to us when when because we were nothing, you know, and uh, and he really he really helped us through a lot of stuff in the studio and, and got us there. But the funniest thing about that is most people won't remember, but that record was done before iTunes, right? So we made oh, it. Yeah, we made it a separate track. One because we didn't have a lot of songs for that record, so we wanted it to look <laughs> impressive on the back. So we we're like, "Cool, that's track one." Um, but an go. unintentional uh, uh, consequence of that was when iTunes came along, it was its own track. So unfortunately, some people paid a dollar for <laughs> for that for Here that alone and i was like oh that sucks so bad <laughs> but there was nothing we could do about it there was absolutely zero we could do about it at the time that was just the way it was set up so sorry yeah, Jeff Top. sorry Jeff guys Top. <laughs> it's stuck with me dude i say it all the time I say it all the time we there did we too we did too it, it, it was always a uh, it, it was so funny to us that it was there at it because we heard it it was constant like when we were recording here we go here we go here, here we, we go. go over and over <laughs> and i was like dude what if we put that as the first song because we can't hear these songs without hearing here we go and they, yeah. Luck, <laughs> luckily, they indulged me. They're wow. like, "Yeah, go ahead, dummy, put it on there. We don't care." <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was awesome, but anyway, it was fun because it breaks One right dollar. into the next Ching. song. Like, yeah, you know, it breaks right into the next song. We Whoa. easily made five extra dollars off of that. <laughs> easily. <laughs> uh, I want my money uh, back. Going, going back again. So, how did you guys get uh, the next big thing on that? That uh, John Tucker must die. Uh, how so, did that come about? That the, or... so we were actually it was it was kind of weird because like Chris, a, a, our guitar player, uh, Chris was kind of my my fifty fifty partner. Like me and Chris, like I started the band and and drug him in, but once I drug him in, me and him were always like, boom, let's let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and other people came in and came out, and later on got very important in the band, but. It, it was kind of a kind of a me and Chris shit that we steered. So Chris saw this thing and it was this contest and it was like this MySpace best band of whatever. MySpace. Yeah, it was. Uh, and uh, and he like <laughs> MySpace. he entered it and never thought about it again. We we had we had these we had a bunch of friends, uh, Sean Kalon and Kevin uh, and uh, in Dallas that were doing the studio called dang studios and they were like building it and they were like pop punk guys, super talented musicians, super talented dudes. And, and they were like, they, they were kind of guinea pigging their recording stuff off of us to where they would just be like, Hey, come up and record. And luckily for us, you know, we got great demos and, and we got to try stuff out and, uh, right on. And and they were just good dudes. And uh, we did a demo for the next big thing. And um, he put that up there for the for the contest and then totally forgot about it. And there was supposed to be like three or four rounds. So I guess it was like MySpace and Wind Up Records, which was Evanescence and Creed and uh, oh, yeah, Seether, yeah. like the big label back there, back back in that time. Yeah. Um, they, they were part of the contest too. And basically it kind of boils down to, they, they called us and they were like, Hey, you're a finalist. There's two more rounds, but we wanted to let you know you're a finalist. And then like, it was supposed to be two more rounds. And then they called us like the next week and like, Hey, guess what? You guys won the whole thing. So like, they like skipped the whole <laughs> second round and, and just, wow. <laughs> and we're like, you guys win the whole thing. Um, <laughs> that's so, pretty cool so we were like uh, that you won the internet great uh, at the time <laughs> yeah that's what it was and they were like so you're gonna yeah. be in this movie called john tucker must die um we're gonna pay for you guys to go in and record uh with this producer um uh 
and, and it it's comical because I always say his name wrong. And I think it's Shegel, but I always call him Ben Shegler because I, clearly I'm retarded. Um, but uh, but Ben Shegel. <laughs> Uh, who's done some great, great stuff. And, and then he's done us. Um, and so he did that song. <laughs> so it, we, we did that track and, and, uh, you know, we were like, uh, ho- you know, cool, best unsigned band in America. Right. Clearly that means, and that was the title best unsigned band in America. Clearly that means what's the next step. We'll obviously be getting signed after that. No. No, that's not what happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what happened at all. <laughs> but well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, what was what came of that? Um, the best still unsigned band. The, still, we tie, we still champion that name because we're just not. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, um, you can have it. Comes with it's a heavy burden, my friend. It's wear that wear that <laughs> crown with pride. Um, <laughs> So no, we, we we were on John Tucker Must Die. The, the, some of the coolest stuff about that was uh, we did that, and then that that sprung off into like a lot of the MTV shows that were going on, like the reality shows. Like I don't remember if it was The Hills or I don't know. Some of those some of those picked it up. We were on uh, we were on a couple Real of world. things. Yeah, we like we were on a couple of things for them, um, and then like Walmart would do like. John Tucker Must Die exclusives um, to where they they released a couple CDs and like the coolest thing was the soundtrack. We were on there with like the All American Rejects and Steffi yeah. and like a whole bunch of like yeah. uh, OK Go, like a whole bunch of killer bands, killer bands. Yeah. And then there was us. Um, and it was it was just great. <laughs> like it was it was cool. It was like a cool thing. And then we went and saw the movie and. The movie was the movie. Um, I I assume, <laughs> you know, it wasn't right. it, was, it wasn't Freddy versus Jason, which would have been cool. Um, yeah, but right. I, I equate <laughs> it to like a two thousands version of like a John Hughes film. You know, I'm sure yeah. it's I'm yeah. sure it's our generation of the Breakfast Club or Sixteen Candles. I'm very sure of that. It yeah. may be a cult classic someday. We're about fifty people. Right. Right. <laughs> And uh, all I knew is there was a bunch of dudes wearing thongs, and uh, I'm glad that trend wow. that trend didn't catch on. But you know, <laughs> it, it it was really good experience. It was fun. Um, it, it it there was some residuals that came our way that was that was really helpful. Um, that was about it, man. Can't complain there. Definitely yeah, not. Can't complain about that. I think I. Especially, I think I know, made a. You can every everybody go out and and rent it on Netflix this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Boost I, it up. Boost I it up. Still, every like six months, get a dollar and fifty six cents, and that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, that's awesome. I was gonna ask you too, and I, what what do you do? You what do you do besides music? Is um, I, I, work or uh, just something that you like to do besides music? Uh, or are you just music? <laughs> well, I do music. It's all it, a lot of it's music related. Um, if I'm not doing like stuff for me, I do songwriting and recording for other people as well. Um, I, I I work with a lot of a lot of friends that that do uh, different types of music. So anything from like country music to metal to rock to uh i mean different genres i'm working with a guy uh that's doing a band called push button romance and uh he we just released his first single and it's kind of like that it's like a throwback to 90s era rock um which is really cool um um working with a little bit of a heavier band uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I, that I do out on, out, um, out there. Um, but most of it's just music related. You do a quinceañera? Quinceañera. I would love, <laughs> man, if I could do a, a project that sounded like Mana, I would be so happy. It'd be so good. <laughs> but if it does, if it doesn't sound like that, if, like traditional Tejano, I, I'm just not good enough. Like. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around the drums. Like it's such a different way of playing music that I'm like, I'm out. 
I, I listen to it. I love it. Um, like I'm a huge Selena fan. Like, uh, like one of my all time oh. favorite <laughs> female singers is Selena. And, uh, but I, yeah. it's not my I gotta, lane. I got to interject. I got to interject real quick. Yeah. So, you know, Kylie from junior love you know. Kylie. Um, so he's, he's become one of my best friends and we, we travel, we our our families travel together, the whole deal. Oh, and sweet. Uh, anyway, so when we were just at the boys weekend, Kylie, you know, I had mentioned before he was with us and he is obsessed with Selena right now. Oh. So we had to go do the whole Selena tour. So we saw where she was shot. Um, we saw her, her, uh, what, what her statue. Um, what else did we see, Josh? Her, her, her grave, her yeah. grave, her oh. studio and her, her parents and brother and her she home grew up. Is all stitched yeah. together. We went and saw all of that this weekend because he would he was he was determined to get us to see every one of us because he had he got a little obsessed because he's watched so much of stuff on Selena lately. Uh, but it was it was cool. It was it was actually really neat. I've seen that movie several times, but he has now got me watching the documentary now because he wouldn't shut up about anything for Salinas. So uh, <laughs> anything for Salinas, this bumper is going yes. it was pulled off by the bus of Salinas. Oh my god, it's such Rest a good movie. Tall. It's, have you seen yeah. the uh, the uh, the series? I think the Netflix we just series. It. We're, so we're like good. Two, we're like two episodes in. So we're good. Like two episodes in. So good. Yeah, yeah. So good. Like I'm yeah, friends he, he, with uh, he, with her husband, uh, her ex husband on on Facebook, and I follow I follow him. I oh, Chris? like friends very loosely. Uh, at by any means, friends on Facebook. I follow his stuff. He's doing some stuff right now, and it's. I, I'm always watching. I'm always watching to see what he's well, doing next. If you want to know anything, just hit up Kylie. Oh, I he will. Knows everything. I'm jealous. <laughs> he knows everything. Oh man. my god, I'm I mean, jealous. Just, yeah, he was like a giddy squirrel girl when we got to see it all. He was like, "Oh, we made the whole tour," you know. Yes. <laughs> that. That's how I am with Prince. Uh, so I, I'm. I've got a oh, yeah. trip. Pl I'm planning a trip to the to the uh, to his studio. So, oh, right on. Yeah, it's yeah see, I'm, I'm like that with a, a handful of artists, but not like uh, we had Tim DeLotter from Trip and Daisy on, and I love Tim DeLotter from wow. Trip and Daisy and Polyphonic 3. So, and uh, John I, Congleton, I fanboyed out. I was gonna say, John Congleton produced Polyphonic Spree, the guy that produced Two Rock for Radio. He produced one oh, of the okay. records. Yep, yep. Oh, right on. Well, he, 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 I'm a huge fan of him and we had him on the show and I fanboyed out something serious. That's uh, amazing. But he's, he's, he's mine. Like I went to his record store and, uh, you know, I'm like, Hey, are you going to be here? Cause we, now we're texting back and forth a little bit and he's like, no, I can't make it there today. But when we, you know, we'll work it out. And he's been super nice to me. I've, I've bugged him a little bit, but he's always been, uh, receptive and always text me back and say, Hey, come to a show. We'll hook up and hang out. So that's awesome. Anyway, I go on and on. I can go on and on about Tim. He's a freaking amazing human being. He's got so much cool stuff coming out of him. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so going back because we kind of need to wind it down here. Uh, where can we find? Oh wait, before I say that, so is Rocket Queen gone for good? Or no, are we kind of no, 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 no. Okay, so we kind of had to. We we slowed it down. We haven't stopped it by any means. I've still got a couple of tracks that we've finished that we haven't released yet. Like actually I've got, oh, okay. I've got a ton of rocket queen music that we haven't released yet. Um, and we, we absolutely are. So we will be doing this in tandem, but our main focus is definitely Walter Lee. Um, that's just kind of where our gotcha. heart's at. It's where our head is at. Um, I, I have a feeling rocket Queen's just going to be one of those things. That's always going to be around uh in one shape or another been around a long time yeah. how long have you been doing rocket queen rocket queen like 20 years 23 years this year is the 20 year 20 year anniversary of two rock we, oh, we released man. two rock awesome. in 2003 right on so if wow, my, that's crazy you my math is correct a, 20 years <laughs> yeah you got yeah yeah you need to have an yeah. anniversary show or some crazy shit but we've been I, i'm not gonna that. lie I've been listening to the To Be Loved a lot for whatever reason. I'm I'm on that song right now. Huh? Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. That that song was one of the ones. That one and I Hate You was one of the ones that was like the the turning point for Rocket Queen, where we were like, 
okay, we're done doing this. Now we're doing this. Like we always have those definitive, like, okay, we're done doing that. And we're now we're doing this. And those two, those two songs were like, we wrote those and it was like, now we're on to something. Nice. Nice. Okay. So going back now, (laughs) where can we find all your stuff? Uh, Walter Lee music on everything. Walter Lee music on Instagram, Walter Lee music on Facebook, uh, Walter Lee music on TikTok. Um, Walter Lee music dot net is somewhere where I would go and hang out if I was somebody wanting to uh, <laughs> really check out uh, some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, right on. But cool. it, it, it's out there. It's it's like, you know, like Tom DeLong would say, it, it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Of course. All your 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 goodness. But here at the end, we always kind of do this, what you got coming up. So, Josh, you got anything cool coming up in the next few days, this weekend, something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> coming up to <laughs> nope. Denton and, yeah. just Oh, you're coming up here. That's we're, right. We're going we're gonna to try to hit up some podcast stuff, and I'm going to do a little meet and greet and uh, – some business and yeah right on yeah. be a good weekend cool. and we'll have cooler weather yeah all right yeah we got to tackle this ai editing we've we've delved into it a little bit and it's been working but uh we got to get into it a little bit more so josh is going to come up here and we're going to do that a little bit of that but all right, tackle it yeah <laughs> uh, uh well <laughs> have you delved in with any of that walter some AI I, like editing and stuff yet i have not i've uh a- AI is is one of those things where I'm like, all right, let me just watch, let me just watch, you know. <laughs> let me see what let me see what's happening. I, I'm I'm not often the early adopter of much, but uh, right to my own detriment, I should be. I know I should be, but you know, get off my well, lawn. I'm that guy. So a lot of people are frowning on it, but for a small podcast like us, you know, if we go. To, to to go edit something like what we're doing right now and edit it well uh, with camera cuts and all those types of things, it takes hours. Right. Um, and we can do an hour and five minutes and it does all the camera cuts. I mean, it's just, it's a no brainer when you don't have money. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah. And we're actually losing money per- by the minute right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Going, the money is flying away. <laughs> That's awesome. But anyway, anyway, that that's my take on it. But you got anything else going on? Uh, anything cool coming up, like a show or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we are playing Ugly Fest this Saturday, uh, depending on when this comes out, um, in Shreveport. And it's some, okay. It's kind of – I've got a friend in Shreveport that's always doing some sort of festival that, you know, has always – taken us under his wing and putting us out there and taking care of us. Um, he's been around since the junior days as well. Uh, he was oh. in a band called built for speed. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Scott, know guys. so you know, Scott. Yeah. So Scott, yeah. Scott's in, uh, Scott's in Shreveport all, and he's always taking care of rocket queen. And now he's, you know, he's doing stuff for Walter Lee and, uh, he's actually right one on. his new band is one of the bands that I'm, uh, producing and recording right now. Um, they've got a killer new song that's about to come out, uh, soon. Um, so I working on his stuff and we're playing, we're playing ugly fest this Saturday in Shreveport and we are in talks of shooting the first video for, uh, our first single red light. And that should be out oh. either end of the year or first of next year. We haven't picked a date yet. Red light. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I want to search that. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> If you need extras, just call us up. Hey, yeah, you know yeah, man. We'll you know it. Leave that fat redneck in the back. We need those. <laughs> we need more. Well, I'm perfect for it. <laughs> You're in. You're the guy. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. But, uh, okay, so I just real quick, I don't really have a whole what lot What are you doing, Heath? On. Yeah, someone actually asked me. Usually, that's the that's the joke is no one ever asked me. And I just sit here going, "Well, some, somebody freaking asked me what I'm doing this weekend." So anyway, yeah. um, I don't have a whole lot going on, man. To be honest with you, I most likely will be hanging out with the, our son Riker, doing some fun stuff while we can. 
and uh well when josh will hopefully come up so we can do some of that good stuff and then uh yeah that's that's it's gonna be a pretty quiet weekend which is rare but tying into that the next weekend on october 14th um Oh, man, this will be out after the fact, but let's talk about it anyway. We're having a meet and greet in Salado, Texas with the two of us. Uh, We've we've had tons of people already say that they're coming. So if if this comes out after the fact, thank you for coming. We had a freaking blast. (laughs) Thanks for coming. (laughs) And uh, if you want to, all things randomness is uh, randomnesspodcast.com. You can get our merch. Uh, see about us, all our past guests, our gallery, um, where we've been covered on press. Uh, yeah, there's Josh drinking out of uh, randomness cups in both <laughs> hands right now. Uh, so that's what they look like. If you want one, go get one. We appreciate it. And uh, last but not least, Walter, thank you so much for coming to hang out with man. We really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. I had a good time. I learned a lot about old Walter Lee today, so that was really cool. Hey, man, I appreciate so. you having me. And I got to say, that is probably the best logo I have seen in a long time. Yeah. Oh, you like the yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's mem- it's memorable, and then it also has this tie-in with skateboard culture. Yep. So and. I'm a big skateboard guy. The two of us, I love skateboard culture. Heck yeah. Uh, so that's kind of why we did. The two of us. Did. Yeah. <laughs> I, said, uh, I was going to say, I feel like, I feel like I grew up with you with the, the music and the skateboard. Yeah. And the cars and, when you were yeah, talking. It's like, that's, that was us, man. Yeah. That was dude. definitely us growing up. That's if cool. we lived in the same town, we would have been hanging out. So. Where yeah, did you live? Been skate- Here in Temple with, with Heath. Oh, so. t- oh gotcha, yeah, so, gotcha. So, so I played Temple. We're originally yeah. both of us. Yeah, you probably played Bums. Bums, uh, we, the two 100%. Of us, yeah, the two, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the two of us are from Temple originally. I live in Lake Dallas now, uh, so we do this remotely or whatnot, but we're both from Temple. So Heck yeah. But yeah, well, yeah, Temple's yeah, fun. Yeah. I figured, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> it is. It's great. <laughs> it's great. But Yeah, yeah. No, it, it was a great place to grow up, yeah. that's for sure. It's a great place to, to raise your kids and all that good stuff. But I remember they told again, us we were so too much, loud. Man. That's what I remember about Bums. Oh. They're like, you're too loud. Mm, we were it, like... Yeah, that, that's what we do. <laughs> Can yeah. you turn down? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. We're a rock band. We've <laughs> never tried. <laughs> <laughs> but All right, man. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. See you later. Thank you. Thank y'all. See ya. We are gone.